Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is now 6 o'clock. Uh, please join us while Mr. Moore leads us in our invocation and Mr. Kidd in the pledge. If you are so inclined, I invite you to bow with me for prayer. If not, I invite you into a time of silence as you deem appropriate in your own tradition. Yeah. Almighty and loving God, you truly are the God of all people in all places at all times. We pause now before you to give you thanks for a successful school year, to continue the celebrations that come with the end of a year, with graduations, with advancements, God, we also pray for our students as they enter into this summer that you would keep them safe, that you would give them a time of refreshment and renewal, that they may return to us next year ready to learn, ready to be molded. We pray for our seniors who are going on to the next phase of their life, wherever that may lead them. We pray that your hand of protection and guidance would be upon them. And we thank you for smooth transition of leadership in this district. We thank you for all the leaders that you have placed in our midst, those whom you have called to serve the children of this community. We pray now your blessings upon this meeting. We pray that you would lead us and guide us in the decisions we make, that we might set aside personal agendas, that we might set aside personal feelings, and that we might all be led to do your will for your people. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas flag. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Uh, Ms. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of more than five must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Godfrey, please call the first person. Bryce Everton. Good evening, and my name is Bryce Everton, and these are my fellow schoolmates. Thank you for your time, and please listen to what I have to say. What happened at the College Park campus on last day of school is yet another example on how the administration of our school has no regards for students' emotional health. I'm here today to speak on behalf of the quiet groups of students who have sat on the sidelines and watched the corruption of our campus spread for tar far too long. When we showed up at our school Thursday, it seemed like a normal day. We unloaded on buses and we off of the buses and we sat at our normal spot inside the building until the arrival bell rang at 7:20. On the way to class, those of us with backpacks and bags were told by the administration and teachers that we had to leave our things at the AP's office. We were given no reason or advance notices, and we were told to quickly get what we needed and leave your bag here. Many of us received this demand as meaning that we needed to take what was necessary to take the exams on the last day of school. It was until we were already settled in class that it was announced that we could not <coughs> retrieve our personal belongings until 1 p.m. This made no sense to us because dismissal was 11.30 a.m. We wonder why would they keep our things beyond the school day. 
and how am I going to get a ride back to the school at 1 p.m. when my parents are working? Given that we are students with working parents and my house key was in the confiscated bag, I returned to the AP's office at dismissal asking for my bag. We managed to make it to the front of the small crowd of students who were attempting to retrieve their personal belongings. I spoke to one of the APs saying my house key was in the bag inside my personal belongings. Uh, I could, can I at least get to my house keys? The AP responded, tough luck, you should have taken it when we were told you to grab what you needed. But in the mornings, the administration was not clear about what items I needed to take and when my personal belongings would be returned to me. When I arrived home with no house keys, I, the only way to get back to the, to the school was ask one of my neighbors. Upon arrival, I was asked my name, describe what was, what was inside my bag and what my bag looked like. I was told at the time that this information would be used to make sure that I was taking my bag and not someone else's. At this time, I began to think of all the possible outcomes of this or unorganized campus procedure that according to Dr. Morell, has been taking place for over 20 years. We were very concerned about the emotional and physical safety of students and staff on the campus. These kinds of negative interactions between administration and students happen all the time. At first, I used to be a go to the admin to report situations like students who vape in classes and the restrooms. I used to report the students who were selling drugs on campus. I used to report to the administration the students who showed disrespect to each other in the lunchroom by throwing food at each other or having fist fights. I used to report the students who claimed that they were going to kill themselves or overdose. In fact, another student reported an overdose student on our bus one afternoon and nothing was done. I observed these events like this go on every day. After beginning after being in College Park environment for two years, I learned to keep my head down and go through the motions because that I will not be supported by the administrations when other students retaliate against what I say. I almost know, and I almost know no matter what, who I voice my concerns to or who my parents talk to at College Park, nothing will be done to change the practices that currently go on at College Park. You may wonder why do I still go to College Park given these strong feelings and negative experiences at College Park with the administration. The only reason why I still go to College Park and wake up in the morning is because of one of my, is because of my Japanese teacher who inspires me to go on every day learning about culture in the world. She cares about us as people as if we were her own children. She has built a program that is inviting and accepting for all students who are willing to learn. Is our prayer that our voices are heard and that we will that what we shared with you today will not fall upon deaf ears. We have a voice, but you're the ones who have the power to make these changes at College Park. I hope that the future Cavaliers will not endure the same hardships and harsh environment as we have. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda Everton. Good evening. You've just heard what my son has had to share with you. I never thought I would be that parent in front of you speaking about a school culture in need of change. However, how can I stand by when he and his friends continue to voice these kinds of concerns? I have followed the appropriate chain of command over and over again. I have reached out to Dr. Merle and his team multiple times over the past two years, and his response, if any, is always that CP has done these things, these ways, for over 10 years. This response leaves me wondering if he is unaware that his students' and clients' needs have changed over the past 10 or 20 years. In this particular instance, I reached out to Dr. Merle and Mr. Kager asking for answers. Dr. Merle's email response is provided in your resources on page one and two, I believe, which I have provided for you, just left my family and the friends of my son with more questions. In addition, I reached out to Mr. Kager, who said he would investigate and get back with me by Monday at the latest, and I have yet to hear from him. 
I am here in desperation to gain answers for my children and their friends. College Park needs to address their communication downfalls and the way that what they do impacts the school culture and their children negatively. On the last day of school, as you've heard, many College Park students, things were confiscated. The students were asked to leave their belongings with no guidance and reasoning for this procedure. Once they found out that they should pick them up at one o'clock, my son and many other students, he says about 40, tried to retrieve their things at 1130, but were denied access to their belongings. For my son, that meant that his school keys were in the possession of the, I mean the house keys were in possession of the school. The school had possession of his house keys. For another student, that meant that her car keys, and she was unable to get into her car stranded in the parking lot till the 1 p.m. time. I asked school board members to ask Ms. Dr. Morrell and his staff if they have thought about the safety hazard they are causing for our students by denying them access to their personal belongings an hour and a half after dismissal time. I asked Dr. Morrell and Mr. Kager for these answers and no one seems to acknowledge that this CP procedure causes undue danger and stress on our turnkey students. Given the recent events across our nation, my email says this as well, I would support safety measures and searches that are in accordance with your CISD legal policy. However, the haphazard procedure that the students experienced on Thursday is in direct violation of your own CISD legal policy. The yellow tab shows that the first sentence of this section of the legal policy states, students shall be free from unreasonable searches and seizures by school officials. Given that Dr. Merle and his administration team did not communicate this procedure in writing to all students and parents, our students were subjected to an unreasonable search and seizure on the last day of school. When I asked Dr. Merle for the reasons behind this unreasonable procedure, he gave me three answers which I have included in your email. He stated, first of all, that students leave with paper and other items and then throw them out the bus and car window and create a problem in our community. What about the problem that is caused in the community when our students don't have their personal belongings that they rely on to be safe the last day of school? The second reason Dr. Merle presented to me was that students bring items to school to create a disruption like air horns or release of pests like bugs. What about the disruption to our students and their families who rely on CISD transportation and had to arrange transportation back to school in the middle of our workday so our students could retrieve their personal belongings? The third reason Dr. Merle presented was safety. Given the recent events across our nation, I would support safety measures and searches that are in accordance with the CISD legal policy. If safety was truly the reason for this search and seizure, then CP should have a system to know which student turned in which backpack. However, the lack of pre preparation and procedure left a room full of backpacks with no way for staff to know whose bag was whose. If CISD had conducted a search and had found contraband or worse, a valid threat to our school, the staff wouldn't have known which student posed that threat. I'm here to ask the school board to provide Dr. Morrell and his administrative staff with extra guidance and training about the students he serves. In the two years we have been Cavaliers, I have met with several different members of his administration team regarding these unwritten policies and procedures. That's okay. Is that the end of my time? It is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item three, the consent agenda. I have had no request to remove every, anything. Motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. All those in favor? We're going to remove item 6A up. Um, name the principal of San Jacinto Elementary, Dr. Knoll. Well, good evening and thank you. It's uh, <clears throat> an honor tonight to name our new principal at San Jacinto. Uh, San Jacinto Elementary has had a great school year. They've had very positive momentum and as we sought out a new principal for that campus. We wanted somebody that could continue uh, that growth and we were able to uh, identify a candidate that served our school district as an instructional coach and currently as an assistant principal. And so it is my pleasure um, that to recommend Jamie Allman to be the new principal of San Jacinto Elementary. All right. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All right. 
All those in favor? Thank you, Miss Dr. Knoll. Congratulations, Miss Almond. President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. I am honored to serve Conroe ISD as the principal of San Jacinto Elementary. Thank you for your trust and confidence in me uh, to lead the students and staff at San Jacinto as together we join hands, hearts, and minds to pursue excellence in our Caney Creek community. When asked recently, where do I see San Jacinto in the next five years? Without hesitation, I responded, I see San Jacinto as a model school where others come to observe CISD best practice implemented with success in such a way to positively impact student achievement. Additionally, I understand and I recognize the academic, social, emotional, and behavioral growth we must foster in our San Jacinto sons, and we have one here with us this evening, for our sons to graduate as Caney Creek Panthers prepared for college, the workforce, and to serve in our United States military. Again, I thank you for this opportunity, and I acknowledge the magnitude of the task before me, and I look forward to the bright future for our, for our San Jacinto sons. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jamie, would you like to introduce your family? Alongside tonight, I have my family with me. I have Sean Almond, who's my husband. We are high school sweethearts. We just celebrated 25 years of marriage and 30 years of dating, and he's associate principal at Oak Ridge, uh, Oak Ridge High School. I have my oldest daughter, Allie, who's a 2016 graduate of Oak Ridge and is currently a junior at Sam Houston State, where she's majoring in hospital administration. I have my middle daughter, Autumn Almond, who is a junior at Oak Ridge High School and is on the cross country team and says she wants to be a teacher and administrator one of these days. And our youngest is Albany. She is an eighth grader at Irons Junior High and active in club and school volleyball. And missing tonight is our oldest, our son. He's a, a, a senior at West Point and he is in the field with cadet responsibilities. And then I have friends and my Broadway family and my new San Jacinto family here as well. So thank you. Thank you. Item 6B, naming the principal of the Woodlands High School, Dr. Knoll. Well, Mr. Colson has done an outstanding job at the Woodlands High School for the last 16 years. And so um, I will have comfort with uh, our new principal of the Woodlands High School as we both uh, work to fill big shoes uh, this next school year. <laughs> I'm confident that uh, we've found the right person to fill those shoes at the Woodlands High School. Um, Ted Landry brings with him experience as the current principal of Kingwood High School of running a, a large 6A program. It's very similar to the Woodlands High School. Uh, in addition to that, uh, he's actually one of our own as he served as a counselor at Conroe High School back from, I think, 2000 to 2002, if I have those years right, Dr. Landry. Um, so this is a homecoming of sorts for, for Dr. Landry and, and his family, and we uh, excited to have him, so uh, I would like to recommend Dr. Ted Landry to be the new principal of the Woodlands High School. So, so moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Congratulations, Dr. Landry. President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Noel, um, first, I'd just like to say a very heartfelt, very sincere uh, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, anyone who's spent any time in the Houston area has heard of, of the Woodlands and the traditions of excellence and the culture of success that is the Woodlands High School. Um, to even be considered to be the principal of such a fine school is, uh, is a tremendous honor. 
uh, to be selected is an absolute dream. So thank you very much for your confidence. Uh, I can assure you that I will work tirelessly uh, and to the best of my ability to uphold the traditions and values that have made the Woodlands High School uh, one of the best in the state. Uh, absolutely. I would also like to take the opportunity to uh, recognize and acknowledge my family. Um, you know, what we do, what I do, is, uh, is not easy, and I couldn't do it without their tremendous love and support. Um, so I would like to recognize my family and friends, uh, my wife of 22 years, also a career educator, Casey Landry. Um, we have uh, four wonderful children. Um, our oldest uh, is Abigail, and she'll be 11 years old next week. Um, Caroline, who is eight. Aww. Luke, who is six. Um, and, and Kevin, uh, who just turned three. And he's, and he's very good at it. Uh, I look forward to introducing them to the Woodlands and, and all of the wonderful things that the Woodlands High School has to offer. So thank you again for your confidence in me, and I look forward to working very closely with all of you. Thank you. All right. of a 6A high school, but he's got a 6A family. <laughs> and, and, a beautiful, and a beautiful one at that. A closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by Section 551.074 and Section 551.072 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed session or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be at either this public meeting upon the reconvening of this public meeting or at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. The time is 6.22. The board is now in open session at 7.05 p.m. The next item on the agenda is item 7A, which we are going to withdraw this item for the moment, and item 7B, consider purchase of approximately 62.7 acre site in the Caney Creek feeder zone. Do I have a motion to approve the item as presented? Motion to approve. Motion Thank to you. approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion passes. And with that, it is 7.05. Do I have a motion to adjourn the board meeting? Make the motion. A second. All right. Board meeting adjourned.